Have you ever felt like you're not good enough? Do you ever feel like no matter how hard you try, you always fail? I sure do, especially after what happened to my little brother. You see, I was in charge of taking care of him since my parents were going out for the night. Now, you may think I decided to be lazy and not watch over him, but that's not the case, so don't jump to conclusions just yet. So after my little brother and I had dinner, I gave him a gift that I got from the video store. It was a Teletubbies VHS. He got really excited because that's his favorite show. So I let him watch it before bedtime. However, after he was done watching it, I heard him crying. I went to check on him and asked him what was wrong. He told me something about a scary bear. I put my little brother to bed and tried to comfort him. Then I went back to the living room, rewinded the VHS to the start and played it. The episode started with a seesaw appearing in Teletubby Land. Po and Lala came into the scene, got on either side of the seesaw, and went up and down on it. Eventually, the magic windmill started spinning, so Po and Lala had to get off the seesaw, but strangely they couldn't. It looked like their fur had snagged on the seesaw and was keeping them on it. They kept struggling to get themselves loose until the episode abruptly cut to the spinning windmill, followed by Tinky Winky and Dipsy heading towards it without Lala and Po. Both of them did their usual hugging and falling down before going up a hill where one of them would be chosen to display a video clip of real people. Tinky Winky got chosen to display a video clip of some children at a playground. The children looked like they were having a great time. That was until a person in a bear costume passed by. The children started following the bear as the video clip ended. In the next part of the episode, a slide appeared, and Tinky Winky and Dipsy went sliding down it. Eventually, Dipsy got stuck on it and Tinky Winky tried to get him off, but the magic windmill started spinning again, which made Tinky Winky leave Dipsy just to run toward it. There was a magical event going on, and Tinky Winky was the only witness. It started with a voice that echoed across the land saying, It's the bear! It's the bear! And I'm coming! Tinky Winky then ran to find a place to hide before the bear arrived. That's when I noticed that the bear looked familiar, as it closely resembled the bear from the video clip. Maybe that's what the bear actually was, because after they arrived, they started walking toward the seesaw where Lala and Po were still stuck. The bear started pulling on Lala and Po and was able to get them unstuck, with some of their fur still stuck on the seesaw. Then the bear went to Dipsy and got him unstuck too. After that, the bear started walking away, but strangely, Dipsy, Lala and Po started following them, just like the children in the video clip. When Tinky Winky saw them following the bear, he started running after them to get them back. Unfortunately, it was too late, as they faded away with the bear after leaving Teletubby Land. Tinky Winky said his usual, uh -oh. except he sounded rather disappointed, which was reasonable considering the circumstances. The episode then showed the baby son, except it wasn't smiling or laughing like usual. Instead, it had a disappointed look, as if it was disappointed at Tinky Winky. The last part of the episode took place inside of the Teletubby house. Tinky Winky walked inside, looked at the camera, and let out a sad, uh oh. He walked over to the table, where a bowl of Tubby custard was sitting, and he sat down and started eating it. Somehow, he had tears coming out of his eyes, and his tears fell into the custard while he was eating it, which made the custard lumpy. When Tinky Winky consumed the last bit of the Tubby custard, his head dropped onto the table as if he had become unconscious, and the episode ended. Now I knew what my little brother meant by a scary bear, but what happened next was more important than that, because when I went to check on my little brother, he wasn't in his room. In fact, he wasn't in the house. I could tell because when I went into his room, there were dirty footprints on the floor that led to the window. However, there were two different footprints, one of them being my little brother's, and the other being giant-sized shoe marks that were smooth all around. I went outside the house and saw my little brother walking to the nearby playground. That's when I saw a tall man in a bear costume walking with him. I ran to them and tried to grab my little brother, but the man shoved me off. 
I kept trying to get my little brother back, but the man got more aggressive with me every time I tried to grab my little brother. Eventually, the man got so fed up with me that he physically beat me. I tried to recover as quickly as I could so I could call the cops on him, but it was too late. He took my little brother away and they both disappeared. At that point, I was really upset, because I knew if my parents found out that I didn't keep my brother safe, it would not end well for me. After they got home, I told them what happened to my little brother, and before I could tell them that I tried to get him back, they decided to jump to conclusions and punish me. Now, if getting physically beaten by a man in a bear costume wasn't enough, my parents did the same thing. Now my body really hurts. Oh well, I guess this is what I deserve for not trying hard enough. After all, life isn't about anything, it is the consequence. The Incredible Hulk did not appear in Teletubbies for God's sake, so fuck that other Teletubbies lost episode story that has the Hulk.